And welcome back to Subculture After Dark. Well, we are going to play you a brand new track in a moment called Burn It Down, of course, from Melbourne band The Last Martyr. But we wanted to know a little bit more about this track, and we also wanted to know a little bit more about what The Last Martyr have been up to over the last couple of months. So we thought we would actually get Monica on the phone right now to chat about all of that. Welcome to the program, Monica. What's up? Hey, David, how are you going? I am going so well. Now, Monica, The Last Martyr, you've got this brand new single out called Burn It Down. You've been playing lots of shows at the moment as well. But uh, tell us a little bit about Burn It Down. Where did this track come from? Yeah, so we've um, released the track earlier in November, and it's basically it's one of those tracks that we kind of leaned a little bit more on the electronic elements as opposed to the guitar elements, and it goes on a journey. We've got like a synthwave uh, verse two, and then it just dives in full force in the chorus, and really what it's about is just being sick of the state of the world and kind of wishing we could burn it all down and start again. Did you find it a pretty easy track to write lyrically? Yeah, I think once I decided on the concept, I remember the words burn it down were kind of like dummy vocals to start. And then when I came back the next day into the studio, I thought, you know what, actually, let's run with this. And I kind of wrote the song around that burn it down in the post chorus. And so it kind of all snowballed from there. But yeah, it wasn't actually the burn it down lyrics weren't actually meant to be the final lyrics, but sometimes just scratch lyrics pop into your head and you can't shake them and you think okay that's what it's meant to be and there's a real anger there with this track as well what what came first the lyrics or the music because it feels like the the anger of the lyrics is very very present in the music as well the music came first but i knew that lyrically i had to match the energy of the music because it really does go full force especially you know in those mortal combat uh kind of um, you know, the intro and, and just the whole song musically was just a force and I knew I had to yeah, match that energy, like I said. So the once the words Burn It Down came into my mind, um, like I said, it, it did snowball and, um, yeah, like I just kind of wanted to um, make sure that the lyrics matched the energy of the track, I guess. You mentioned earlier as well about there's a more electronic sound on this um, track as well. That it's something that The Last Martyr has always been willing to do is experiment. Was that, was that part of that experimentation, having that more electronic sound come through, or was that something that you'd talked about for a while? Yeah, I think it's a natural progression. Ricky, our bass player, is pretty into electronic music and has always kind of wanted to incorporate those influences. We're influenced by a lot of different artists. And so, you know, it was really interesting. I I mentioned that verse two, which is kind of this synthwave verse. And it was very interesting vocally to try and create um, that verse around something that is so different to the rest of our sort of more traditional style metal parts especially in this track um so it was so much fun and i think that kind of um flows through to the other instruments and especially the vocals uh, when you have those electronic elements and things are a bit more stripped back when it comes to guitars because you can do a lot more when it's not just going full force and straight belting um so it does allow for a little bit of nuance both lyrically and then thematically as a result Definitely. And you worked with Chris Lalek again on this one. Of course, you worked with him as well. You've been working with him for a while now, but I think Chris is one of the best producers in Australia. What is it that you like about working with him and what do you feel he brings to your music? Yeah, it's interesting. We've been friends with Chris for quite a while and when we initially met with him, um, I know the boys had been mates with him for years, but we worked on um, a track called Like a Ghost, which we released in 2019, and he really dug something out of our sound and he saw where we were trying to go and he kind of bridged the gap between where we were and where we wanted to go. So over the years, it's been really hard to even consider working with someone else because we have developed such a good friendship and such a good working relationship over the years. In fact, we just rented an Airbnb um, a couple of months back to write some new songs and we all stayed in a big house together, which was honestly one of the highlights of the year. It was so much fun. Um, so yeah, he, he does bring a lot of electronic production as well. And um, definitely, um, yeah, definitely that vision of where we want to go compared to where we are and helping us get there. 
Definitely. Now, you, we mentioned before in the intro that you've been playing a lot of shows recently. Over the last 18 months, you've played at some amazing festivals. You, of course, opened for Story of the Year, and you've just done some headline shows. What has it been like being able to get back out there and play in front of your fans after those couple of years that we lost during the pandemic? Oh my gosh, I feel like we just went full force 100% from last year until now. Um, There's been a lot of shows that we've had the opportunity to jump on as well as, you know, as you mentioned, headlining for the first time this month. Uh, We actually had five or six months off playing between these headline shows that we just played and the story of, oh, and it was the Unify show in May, which was the last show before that. So that felt like such a huge gap compared to, last year and and earlier this year but I think I can speak on behalf of all artists in Australia where we're just not taking things for granted at the moment in terms of being able to play live and it's really cool to watch so many regional tours actually um, going on at the moment and how bands are really embracing going into you know areas other than the major cities because I think that we were just starved for live music for so long both fans and musicians so um, that's one thing that I've really noticed that's come out of the pandemic is there's a lot more regional tours which is really great yeah i was going to ask you about that because of course i grew up in a regional town so it was very difficult to hear heavy music in those days it was a lot of country bands would come through and a lot of folk bands but not a lot of heavy bands but there are so many fans of heavy music in regional areas even when i was growing up there so Is that something that we need to embrace more as an industry, do you think, that we should be putting on more shows with heavy bands in regional towns? Yeah, I I definitely think so. I do have fond memories of... um you know, when I was younger, going to places like Orange, and you'd get such good turnouts in, you know, the local hall, because it was so rare that bands would go there, and it was such a brilliant opportunity for up-and-coming bands uh, to build relationships with an audience that maybe they wouldn't have before, and that audience embraced them on almost a deeper level, because it was sort of a rare opportunity that gigs would be put on, especially heavy gigs in their town, and I was just chatting to my bandmates about this the other day, but I've got such fond memories of all ages shows as well. And so I think that um, investing in all ages shows would be really, really beneficial for the music scene too. I've got, um, yeah, so many memories from going to the local hall or traveling to random places around Sydney where I grew up to, um, yeah, just go to any shows that I could whilst, you know, being underage. Now, I know you always offer a lot of advice to up-and-coming artists, so I thought I'd ask you this question. What was the biggest difference you noticed doing your first headline shows? Like, is there any advice out there for, for young bands who are thinking about doing their first headline shows as well? What did you notice was the big difference? Well, I think we waited a really long time before doing our own headline shows and it was kind of a step that we had to take in our career to see, well, how many fans are we able to get if the show is, you know, with us headlining, we're supposed to be the draw card as opposed to, you know, a big international act because it's kind of hard to gauge. Um, So it was a huge, uh, scary thing, but a step that we thought necessary to take. And I would say there's definitely some pros and cons. Um, You know, one of the hardest parts is you are the headliner you are the draw card and so we hustled so hard you know we had to invest a lot of money in Facebook ads for example and um, we definitely felt a lot more pressure than we would just being a support band but it was a good kind of pressure it was definitely a challenge which um, we feel really pleased with the result and there's definitely positives as well it's really really humbling when you're on stage and you realize you're the last band and you look out into the crowd and some of them are singing the words to the songs and so that's definitely a special feeling it's a lot more relaxed in some ways as well because um, yeah you, you feel like you're welcome onto the stage as opposed to some of those high pressure situations where people aren't really there to see you. Definitely. Now for the big question, what have you got in store for us for this summer and going into 2024? So we have two shows supporting the amazing Hanabi from Japan as part of their Good Things support, uh, Good Things side shows. Uh, We're playing in Melbourne on the 28th of November and uh, that one's sold out, which is incredible. And we're also playing with them in Brisbane on the 4th of December. And I believe there's still a a few tickets left for that, but I think that's probably going to sell out pretty soon as well. Um, And then we're doing, speaking of all ages shows, uh, on the 9th of December, we're playing an all ages festival. We're lucky enough 
have to headline. We've got a bunch of really cool local heavy bands like North Road and Ironstone and Priorities, um, as well as a whole bunch more. It's like a full day. So I'm really, really excited about that because, yeah, like I was saying, all ages shows are really special to us. Um, we've got some music uh, in the works. I can't really say too much at this stage, but um, definitely it's going to be uh, that really nice mix that we're enjoying lately of the heavy stuff mixed with electronics mixed with yeah I guess melodic vocals so I'm really really excited to share that with the world soon hopefully awesome well we are going to play burn it down right now on our show what would you like to say to everybody out there before they take a listen to this amazing track and before they go out and grab tickets for the shows that you've got coming up as well well, this is a track that I hope everyone just loses themselves in that helps them get out any pent-up anger or resentment towards the world. Um, yeah, I hope that everyone just imagines themselves in a sweaty mosh pit yelling burn it down when they hear it and hopefully they'll be joining us in one of those sweaty mosh pits at one of the upcoming shows. 